Hello, hey. everybody. We're back for part two of Katawa Shujo. Let's play. The last time we left off, our main protagonist received a note in his math book that was slipped there surreptitiously by someone while he was not looking. He met this person in the woods, and it turned out to be Iwakama. I think that was her name. I think it was something like that, yes. This was just five minutes ago, and I can't remember. No, it's a... It's e Iwanako. Iwan Iwanako. Iwanako, yes, yeah. sir. And uh, they met up in the woods, and she was like, Yo, you are totally cute. You should totally date me. What the fuck? Why are you not dating me? Fuck you. She and asked he, about. And he was like, Ah, ah, heart attack. He had a heart attack because a girl asked him out. Yep. So, he went to the hospital and spent four months there. And while spending his four months in the hospital... His parents and the doctor told him, listen, you're going to a school for crippled children. And he said, I really sucks dick, but I guess I'm going to have to. So now, here we are at what I suppose is the gates of the crippled school. I would assume so. So, well, let's move on. The gate looked far too pompous for what it was. In fact, gates in general seem to do that. But this one especially so. Pretty pompous gate. I gotta say. Red bricks, black wrought iron, and gray plaster assembled into a hole that didn't feel welcoming at all. I wondered if it looked like what a gate for a school should look like, but couldn't really decide. Probably no. I wonder if insurance covers this, or they if this is like a private school they have to pay for. They probably have to pay for it in the same way their medical bills stop being covered by insurance, but they probably have some kind of a donation organization to help the kid out. You think so? They you think they would have covered that? Oh, like what happened to the one person we know that's in that situation, kind of. Well, she goes to regular school now, so... Well, now? Yeah. But, I mean, not, not previously. You're right. And also, she had life insurance, which paid for most of a lot of stuff. Not It ran out after a while, uh, you're right. Exactly. But it paid for a lot of shit. Oh, well, yeah. Of course, I didn't want to get stuck in thinking about the gate for too long, as I was about to pass through it. So I entered through it with a brisk pace that felt surprisingly good. See, he's able to walk... At a brisk pace. pace. Why is he not a regular school? That's all it takes. Yeah, really. And and even if he couldn't, there would be special passes for him to walk at a slow pace. <laughs> yeah, be, precisely. Yeah. No child left behind. Right. So I walked toward the main building of Yamaku Academy with this brisk pace. I'm alone as my parents are taking my stuff to the dorms, and there's supposed to be someone waiting for me. Ooh, I hope she's cute. Mm -hmm. The grounds are incredibly lush, filled with green. Dude, that, sounds, that school sounds dope. It was green. Shut up. Yeah, really. Anyway, it doesn't feel like the kind of ground a school would have. More like a park, with a clean walkway going past trees and the smell of fresh cut grass and all other park-like things. Words like clean and hygienic pop into my mind. Makes me shudder. I shake them off. They open minded now. It's a new life. I have to take it as it comes. That's what I tell myself. Few big buildings loom behind the leafy canopies. Too big and too many for just a school. They want to keep it hidden. Yeah. Everything seems off. It's different from what I thought I knew about schools. It's an uncanny valley. Even though I was told this is my new school, in the back of my head it doesn't feel like one. I wonder if the feeling is real or caused by my expectations of a school for the disabled. Speaking of that, I don't see anyone else here. Kind of eerie. Kind of eerie. Well, they're probably all inside their straight jackets and tarred helmets. Yeah, and, and soft rooms. Yeah. It makes me wish there was somebody here so I could anchor myself to something tangible instead of having this feeling that I stepped into another dimension. The trees hum with the wind, and the grass hues flashing all around me catch my attention, so he has ADHD. Perhaps. Oh, look at the trees. Mm -hmm. Look at the grass. It makes me think about hospitals again. How they say that the operating rooms are painted green because green is a common color. Really? Yeah, allegedly. Hmm. So why am I feeling so anxious despite all this greenery? Well, you just have really terrible anxiety. Yeah, I, I would say so. This can't be fixed by color alone. Dot, dot, dot. Only after I stand in front of the haughty main building, I surprise myself by realizing why the gate bothered me. It was the last chance I had to turn back, even if I had no life I could return to. But still, 
After entering, there was absolutely no way I could go back anymore. Feeling nervous, and with this realization set in my head, I opened the front door. A tall man with bad posture notices me as I enter. We're the only people in the lobby, so it's logical. <laughs> Look at this goofball. You must be Ni Na Niki? Nakai. Nakai. So you are. Excellent. I'm your homeroom teacher and science teacher. My name is Muto. Welcome. We exchange a handshake that is neither firm nor sloppy, and he looks at his watch. The head nurse asked you for a brief check-in visit, but there's no time for that now. Wow. Oh, should I go later? Yes, afternoon is probably fine. We should get going and introduce you to the rest of the class. They're waiting already. Wow. Waiting for me? I don't really like being the center of attention, but I guess it's inevitable in a situation like this. So he's just going, he's starting class as soon as he gets yeah, there. Yeah, just right off the bat. No orientation, no this is how you get around, no this is where you'll be staying for the next nine months or whatever the fuck he's here for or whatever. Class. Class. Immediate class. Yep. And look at this guy, he's like disheveled, kind yeah. of. He's a science, I mean, he looks like a science teacher, frankly. He, actually, he does. He looks like a high school science he's teacher. A, he's a, uh, dare I say it, a Frager style. I would go more, I, yeah, he's Frager, but if Frager was like, Frager was more indie. Well, I mean, this is, you keep in mind. Okay, you're right. right. <laughs> it's anime. It's anime. What are we going to do about the appearances? There's only so much you can do. True. Somehow, not knowing what is waiting for me makes me feel really nervous. Thinking of this, I almost miss what the teacher is saying. Do you want to introduce yourself to the class? Shit. All right, our first decision here. Do we want to introduce ourselves? Well, I mean, what's do we? How do we want to put it? Yeah, this is the big decision. This is the one decision we have to do make. Do we want to RP with this really hard, or do we want to play like jackasses? Well, did we play? What did we do for the last game? We pretty much played like jackasses. We kind of did. Um, I don't know. I would just go for. This is me, of course. I don't know. Starting a new school, I would probably ask why. Just why? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why? Let's do it. Why? Do I have to? Of course not. That's why I asked. Okay, that's good. Right. Right. Let's go, then. My heart is pounding in my chest, and it keeps me... Oh, dear. Is he going to have a heart and attack he's starting a new school? about my condition as I follow the teacher upstairs. Yeah, it's but he's fun. on drugs now, so... It's just a Groundhog Day progression over and over. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just go to the hospital, start a new school, go to the hospital, start a new school, go to the hospital, start a new school. The third door down the cor third floor corridor is marked by... Fuck it. Yep. Next screen. Muto opens the door and enters. Good morning, everyone. Sorry, I wait again. Wow. I hesitate for a split second at the door, freezing on the spot. Ah, get the crib. This is a big step, I know that, but there isn't any point to worrying so much about it. We not this soon. And here's the class. I follow the teacher into the classroom and look around, partially so I won't have to meet the curious gazes of my new classmates. And look, he's at a desk all by himself over here. Right yeah, he is. You see this little tied side, right-hand side? Uh-huh. Whole class, one yeah. desk. It's pretty spacious. The ceiling is unusually high, and there's lots of space left over and around in between the desks. An entire wall taken up by blackboards and the high, old-fashioned windows will make it seem larger. The students' desks are just standard wooden desks with a shelf underneath for books and wooden chairs with metal frames. Hmm. Simple and efficient. I stop walking in front of the classroom and face the other students. They all look normal, like students in any other school. But then, why would they be here? Yeah, they look normal, as we say, with the person with their hand over their eye, with the cane, with the bandage on the face, with the bandage on the wrist, the person yes. with the blank, retarded stare, this guy who looks like he's got some kind of social disorder, this girl who looks like she's got some kind of murder disorder, and then these two. 
One guy's staring off into space. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, ADHD, whatever. Yeah. And yeah. she's staring off into space, too, but she's been hurt. Yep. Anyone missing a leg? Not that I can see. I don't see any. All right. They're probably like me and have something wrong with them. Only oh, it's not just immediately obvious. Then I noticed that one of the girls seems to be missing the thumb of her right hand. It's a little jarring. Okay, so it's split down the middle. Let's look at the pan. Oh, man. All right, so normal gal, normal gal, normal gal, guy in the back fucking goofing off, girl who has a knee brace on, guy who looks like he also has some kind of sociopathy, and a girl with the most blank stare, and two false legs. Whoa. No legs. You called Damn. it. Damn. You Damn. called the no legs. Damn. Damn. Two false legs? Shit, that sucks. Poor gal. Despite the natural tendency to listen when someone's talking about you, I tune out the teacher's speech halfway through while he introduces me to the class. I notice a flash of dark hair and see that someone is looking at me. A girl with really long, straight hair. That is pretty eye-catching. As she sees me looking back at her, she covers her face with her hands as if it will make her invisible. Yep. There is one boy with a cane leaning against the lockers at the rear of the class. It's weird seeing someone so young with a cane. Another girl seems to be making some weird hand motions. Sign language? She peers at me over the rim of her glasses, then goes back to whatever she's doing. Hmm. She's kind of cute. So is the cheery-looking girl with pink hair sitting next to her. Yep. Ah, I don't see them. She's I really think they're these two. Miss. I think they're the two. She's not making no hand motions. Well, pink hair. Look too cheery or well, whatever. Clearly, they're talking about the pink oh, hair. Oh, that one. Okay. Please welcome our newest classmate. He claps his hands and so does everyone else except one girl in the first row who has only one hand. Wow. I cringe a little, but hide it by bowing and thanks for this applause I did not deserve. After the applause, there is a brief silence that nobody seems to want to be responsible for breaking. The teacher soon realized that he should probably say something. He opens up with some unintelligible noise. <laughs> cuts up as he loses his momentum. And then <laughs> is the teacher disabled as well? <laughs> and then like, God, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> This is, uh, this is, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. showing them uh. stuff. <laughs> well, uh, see, over there. <laughs> Nobody seems to be too interested. Maybe I should have said yes to the self-introduction thing. Yep. Probably realizing he doesn't know anything about me. He just ends up saying my name wrong again and asks me to write it on the blackboard. I do that and turn back to face the class, feeling, feeling awkward. awkward as shit. I listen to the teacher as he drones about getting along while letting my gaze sweep across the classroom. Everyone seems to be listening to him intently, and when he's done, they clap their hands again, which feels like a weird thing to do. <laughs> the first row of girls clap on this round with her... The first row of girl claps on this round with her one hand against her other wrist that ends in a bandage stump. Wow. You know, we can't see her hand, I'm just saying. I think that's, row. that's out of Getting that. fucked! Yeah. Two legs and a hand, potentially? That sucks, dude. Ooh! That's rough. It makes me feel a little bad. No, dude, she wants the D. Perhaps. We're going to be doing some group work today, so that'll give you a chance to talk with everyone. That okay with you? Yeah, it's fine with me. That's good! You can work with Hama uh, Hakami Hakamichi. She's the class representative. Yep. She can explain anything you might want to know. And who else would be able to do that better, right? <laughs> I don't know, somebody who is more than a class representative at a school, probably. Yeah, really. Fucking tell me about cold fusion, bitch. Yeah. Ah, well, you know, it's a uh, theoretical <laughs> fucking something or other. How could I know? It is. It's truly, that is true. Yeah, theoretical something or other. It really is theoretical something or other. The teacher passes out the day's assignments and announces that we will be working in groups of three. It hits me that I don't know who Aham, uh, Hakamichi is. Slow. The teacher seems to catch my helpless expression. Oh, <laughs> right. Uh, Hakamichi's over there. Uh, Shizune Hakamichi. Oh, the pink one. 
As she calls out her name, the cute, bubbly-looking girl with the bright pink hair and gold eyes waves her hand at me. I take a, I dip it, uh, take a seat next to her by the window. What is it about visual novels and the girls with pink hair? Um, it's an unnatural hair color, and it's somewhat significant of rebellion against the societal norms, especially in a confined environment like a disabled school, and I don't know, maybe pink hair is just exotic to people who like hente, and this game was made by people who are definitely hente addicts on 4 so I mean, come on. I think that all those points you raise completely make sense, and we should just move on, because I have no argument or follow-up statement of that. Okay. I agree with everything. By the window. Hey, I guess you're Akamichi, right? It's nice to meet you. Ha ha ha! Squiggly? After it. Wait, what is the squiggly really in language? Because I've never even seen it. The tilde? Is that what we call a tilde? Yeah, it means, at least in mathematics, approximately, or yeah. if in formal logic, it means not. I know, I know what, I know it math wise, at least. But I've never seen it in language. I don't actually know. It's some kind of. I don't have any fucking clue, frankly. No clue. Well, don't know. If you, if the audience knows, they should leave it in no, the comments section. No, no. What we're going to do is preempt our audience and go look it up ourselves. So we'll be right. Sorry for the jarring transition here, but we figured so you had here the we right are. to know. We're well, here we are in Wikipedia. Yeah. And I think you can see most of the page. But we've, we've dis discerned that she was either laughing sarcastically or uh, as... Was just laughing uncontrollably for a long period of time. Well, not necessarily for a long period of time. Maybe she was saying, ha 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 ha! Oh, perhaps. Yeah, or it said, uh, it also represents a lustful or exhausted sigh, such as, hello there. Ooh. <laughs> so it has a anyway, lot of different meanings. So, now you know. Mm -hmm. And the more you know, the more power you have. So, what? I'm caught off guard by her laughter. It's nice to meet you too, but uh, I'm not Hakamichi. I'm Misha. This is Hakamichi Sichan. 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 Look at the name. Uh, <laughs> it's crossed out. <laughs> oh wow! That is hilarious. <laughs> well done. That's really good. I'm. I am happy to see that. Giggling, Misha points to the girl next to her. The one I saw using sign language before. It looks like she's been staring at me this whole time. She nods once nonchalantly to show that she acknowledges my presence. But only... <coughs> yep. She don't care. She has short, yet carefully, neatly brushed hair. A pair of oval-shaped glasses, which are actually more of an ellipsoid. Balanced on the tip of a dainty nose and dark blue eyes that seem to alternate every few seconds between analytical and slightly bored. So she's a smart one. Uh-huh. It's nice to meet you. She immediately looks at Misa, who smiles and makes a few quick gestures get gestures with her hands. Akimichi nods and makes a few gestures of her own. Yep. I start to wonder if the teacher was messing with me saying things like, you'll be able to talk to people and... Who better to explain things to you? <laughs> I can see you're a little confused, right? 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 But I understand why you would think I was Zichan. She changes Jeff, so I'm the person who translates things back and forth to her. I'm like an interpreter! You said it's nice to meet you too. Nice. You're the new student, aren't you? Well, Chi-Chan, of course he is. If he wasn't, he would have been standing up there for no reason, right? Right. All right. <laughs> Misha looks at me with a weird expression and continues. We don't know much about it, but maybe we'll find out later. Maybe I should have introduced myself after all. And they're really making us regret this fucking decision. Yeah, really. Anything would have given a better first impression than the teacher's drone and fumbling with my name. <laughs> we knew there was going to be a new student, but we didn't know you would be here today. So soon. Hichan, right? Maybe this game... Hold on. Maybe this game is, like, forcing you to make... Uh, and I don't want to use the words beta and alpha too much, but since this game is made by Four Leaf Studios, yeah. I feel like I have to to at least communicate in an adequate language here. Yeah. I think this game is forcing you to make alpha decisions. 
Okay. And if you do, if you choose more beta ones, you just get shit on. And if you choose the alpha of the two, you get more. So we have to be an asshole in this game. Like it's a teaching tool. What is being like an asshole? Like when you're when you're given a choice between introduce yourself or not, and you say no, then you're like, oh well, fucking no one knows anything about you now. So you know, roll a d twenty, it fails, you get shit on. Or you know, roll a d six, it might succeed, you might not get shit on. So yeah, definitely we're going to have to play the asshole in this mm-hmm. one. We'll just do traditional Hesman of the Fucker style and just be the biggest pricks we possibly can. Sweep with the underage girl. Oh yeah. Fuck them. I mean, it, it's, it seems as though these games and games like this make it so you have to do that in order to make to get yourself the good ending. If you don't, you'll get the bad ending, really. But we want the good ending, so we're going to be the alpha male here. At least as alpha as we can be while we're playing a Japanese visual novel made by 4chan. Yeah. Which, now that I say, I say that out loud, makes me really question what I'm doing with my life. <laughs> On YouTube, nonetheless. Nothing good. Nothing good. Nothing fucking good. Yep, it fits, doesn't it? Did I say it out loud? It's just a surprise. I've never liked that nickname. <laughs> I don't really see how. Fuck. <laughs> it fits! You look just like I imagined! What's. Ah! <laughs> yeah, you look just like a Hichan! What is a Hichan? Well, the Chan is the Japanese surname that means something. I think it's just like fucking familiar friend or something. What's a Hick? I, uh, it's something to do with his name. Oh, okay. Right, I think. I don't know. I don't fucking know. This game is written by fucking Otakus. Mm. I wonder why everyone seems to think so. I like the uniforms they have for these girls, though. Yeah, they're very, uh, form-fitting. Yep. Yep. I can meet you taps your fingers on the desk to get Misha's attention. They gesture back and forth to each other excitedly, their hands in a blur. Misha seems a little overwhelmed. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Chi Chan wants you to know that she's the class rep. So if there is anything you need to know, you can feel free to ask her. If you know sign language, of course. Do you like school so far? We can show you around a little if you haven't had the time to walk around and familiarize yourself with it. Misha stumbles with the hard word a bit, making it stick out in her otherwise fluid translation. Familiarize. Yep. Shit, Mom. Yep. Ah. Thanks. That would be pretty... I'm... Fuck, okay, fuck the voices from this one. Yeah, really. You just can't do it's it. Ow. It's owl. He's Thanks, today that would be pretty helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Why does someone... <laughs> you've done this Let's Play in nothing but an Eastern European accent. Yeah, I know. But let's keep going with it, I guess. Pretty much the furthest thing from Japanese. I'm only going to do Hisao, though. Because the rest of them are just... There's, <laughs> there's going to be too many to keep track of. Hisao is Nico Bellic from Grand Theft Auto That's 4. That's exactly who I'm modeling it after. <laughs> Precisely. That's my major experience with Russians in gaming. Besides fucking silent characters in any He's not Russian, Russian actually. Games. Well, he, okay, Slovakian or... He's Czech Serbian. Slovakian. Serbian. Oh, not the same thing. Not Russian. Not Russian, but same dialectical differences. Not true. Serbian is a completely different language than Russian. Yes, I know it's different, but it has the same accent when translated into English, or at least very similar to a layman's accent. Plus, I think it uses the uh, the same alphabet that we do, like the Latin-based. Really, as opposed to Cyrillic? I am not entirely sure, but I'm I'm sure most of the things I've know. seen written in Serbian seem to use the same alphabet as English. Yeah, fair enough. Of course, I'm no scholar on Serbian language. I don't but. fucking know. My experience with Serbian language is fucking uh, the gradual report. Yeah, I forgot about <laughs> the gradual report. Ah, 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 ah. That's no good. You should always try to warn as much as you can about where you're going before you go there. Not just with school either. Always. Even if it's a trip to the convenience store. Really, she Ha 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 What about where you're going? I guess I didn't bother to do that. Or just didn't care enough to do so. I didn't look forward to this, even if I committed myself to go along with it half-acidly. But... <laughs> Acidly. Yeah. 
I don't say anything. And Misha signed something that ends in a shrug. What was that? Seemed like it was about me. I feel like swamping over in my seat. Both of them were smiling, but that shrug hit me unexpectedly deeply. I remember when I almost had a girlfriend for the first time. <laughs> my chances are already shit. Exactly. About to have another heart attack. You look down. You okay? Hmm. Don't take it wrong. Don't take it the wrong way, please. I hate when people are afraid to ask questions. That's how people learn things, by asking. True. You should always question your high school. Everything. Let me question everything. Why? Exactly. Recycled joke. Hooray! Yeah! Asking for help is perfectly normal. As much as needing help. Stop looking like you just failed a test. But we did. We failed the fucking introductory test. The game told us fucking four yeah, times. Really? Wow! Ah, 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 She's ah, Wario now. Yeah. Wah! -ha -ha. All right. I didn't ask no questions. Yep. Ah, another thing. You don't have to call Shi-Chan something so formal like Hakamichi or Class Rep all the time. Just don't wear Shi-Chan. Shi-Chan. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, maybe that's too casual. Maybe Shizune would be more appropriate. Why is it too casual? You're high school students. Uh, it's because they're not familiar. Oh, well, Japan is a weird place. Yes, Japan. 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 Yep, yep. Shizune is fine. Vietnam. <laughs> okay, that would be a lot easier for me. I feel a lot more at ease. The language conventions coo soothe my tortured soul. <laughs> yeah, really. So I feel like an idiot for being so apprehensive earlier, especially about Shizune, who I assumed would be all business because she doesn't speak English. She speaks American Sign Language, probably. Would be American Sign Language, or...? I don't know. I don't know if there's a Japanese... I'm sure there is. There is. Jap Sign Language. Fucking Japan Sign Language. Duke Sign Word. Duke <laughs> <Good> Sign... <laughs> Well, she seems to she still seems to like that. Just less so, I guess. <coughs> I like this. This sign language. It doesn't even give you like the it doesn't even let you know that she's signing, it just is dot dot dot. Yeah, something's going on. Oh, we haven't even touched the summit. We should start work now. Or she can be mad. The assignment is also kind of long, so we should start now if we want to finish it before the end of class. When have you worked at the assignment, nigga? Yeah, really. You've been fucking chatting with these two chatterbox girl bitches the whole time. You don't want the shit. Blah, 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 that too. Shizune glares at the two of us impatiently. I don't need to know sign language to understand that. She wants the D. She wants it. Wants a three. <laughs> okay, okay, I get the message. After class, we can take a walk around the grounds together. It's a nice day today. Okay. The assignment is actually very challenging to get through, combining aspects of both being both difficult and unnecessarily long. Yep. So it's high school. Yep. Still, we finish it after a few minutes earlier than anyone else in the class, despite our late start. Shizune and Misha are really capable. I am dead weight. <laughs> yep. They're quite different, though. The class rep is as calm and professional as she looks, while Misha is a lot more playful and girlish. Not to mention a little more easily distracted. Yep. To be honest, the two of them did most of the work. I feel guilty about that. I'm Del Waite. <laughs> the clock tower bells ring, signaling that the end of class is over and everything. I can't read anything. Time for lunch after one class. Yep. Well, you got there late. That's true. Without knowing what else to do, I follow Misha, who is beckoning me into the hallway and down the stairs. We descend, even below the lobby where I met Muto, down to the bottom floor. I'm aware that just like everything else in this school, the cafeteria seems to be too spacious and oddly modern in contrast to the classic exterior. Its big windows open to the courtyard towards the main gate. This, this looks a lot like the cafeteria... At Truman, actually, to be fair. I guess with the exception of the t chairs, kind of. Yeah, it does. We had push chairs, but 
The tables and the actual room looks a lot like Truman's. But yeah, they couldn't even give you a bench. They give you these little circular things. Yeah, I mean, small. it makes sense, kind of, but... At the same time. At the same time. Oh, well. It's the cafeteria! Her enthusiastic statement of the obvious makes people around us stare. But Michi doesn't seem to care as we proceed to the line. Okay, Michi does not give a fuck about anyone, then. It looks like. Yeah, I like her. I want to bang her first. I'd say so. There is a rather long list of menu options, which seems great until I realize that many of them are, are to accommodate students who need special diets. How nice. It almost feels like I'm back at the hospital, eating portions <laughs> measured with scientific precision to meet the needs of the patients. Yes. I pick something at random and follow Shizune to a table, sitting opposite of her. As I nibble indifferently at the food I'd rather not eat, Misha pokes me in the side to get my attention and points to Shizune. I don't understand sign, so the point escapes me. Maybe looking at a person who talks to you is proper and polite? <laughs> talks in quotation. Do you want to know something? What? About anything. We're your guide, so you should ask if there is something. Hmm. Oh, I wonder. Yes. Ooh. Do you want to be a big asshole? We could all we could be a big asshole. Ask about Shizune's deafness. He seems to yeah, we I mean we have to we got we picked the beta Doing version. It. Yeah. Shizune intrigues me, and I kind of want to ask something about her. But I can't really ask about something that personal, can I? We just told you to, yeah. Buster. Hmm. I can't come up with anything else to speak to ask. So I just focus on my... Uh, fuck it, I can't even talk either. Fuck me. While the girls talk between themselves. Misha and Susune sign back and forth very animatedly, throwing sideways glances at me, but Misha refrains from translating. Maybe they are talking about secret girl stuff or something. Yep, secret girl stuff. Yep. They have their own language. That's actually what they're speaking. She's not deaf. She just refuses to communicate with boys because she's a super feminist Tumblr guy. <laughs> That's right. She's so dyke. She has a die cyst scum tattoo on her <laughs> yeah. vagina. Uh, that's not even relative to it. It's transgenders, not gayness. I know, but uh, it's still feminism. I mean, it's still... Die cyst scum? So yeah. all biological women and all biological men can go no, fuck no, no, themselves? No, 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 no. Cisgender stands for normal gender. I realize. But... That that culture has come... That is a branchling, a child of the Tumblr feminism. That's even dumber. The hatred of the, the cyst. You've seen this tattoo, haven't you? This person? You've Okay, so you're familiar. Yep. I am. I also know what it means, and they're fucking... Fuck them. Fuck them. Does it? I don't even really... Fuck not, the people who know what it means, and fuck the people who use what it means, <laughs> and fuck them for fucking perverting it and being even dumber than the fucking original. I... Which is dumb as shit to begin with. I have to say, I'm not entirely familiar, but... Cyst scum just means... I mean, if cyst scum just means regular gendered people, then what yeah, does that so, say about your movement? Die regular people? Essentially, yeah, but as, uh, people who are not transgender or transsexual or agendered or non-gendered or bi-gendered or pan-gendered, anyone who's not that, fuck them. Well, that's pretty dumb. I agree. You can go stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yep. She just grinned like a fucking demon. Just, ah, this is hilarious. She's the personification of cutesy anime. True that. I quickly notice the conversation in sign is not enough to fill a silence. Oh, no shit. I didn't even do it! Wow. You didn't even ask about her deafness! I told you! Ask about your fucking deafness! And you know what you did? Jack fucking shit, bitch! Fuck you! You can't even be alpha when we fucking tell you to. Alright, well you have to just keep being the alpha. We have to not be beta at all. Yep. The dark haired girl I noticed before is slumped over her desk in the last row. Oop. Oh, shit! She jumps a little when Misha crashes into the room with the elegance of her rhino. Misha. She shrinks deeper into her seat. I can feel her tension all the way from here, as if she were slowly turning into stone just from our presence. So, perfect match. Mm -hmm. We ought to bang her first, maybe. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. Whoever we have the opportunity for, frankly. Really? Whoever shows I mean, up yeah. first. Misha and Suzune either don't notice or don't mind it, as they walk directly past her to their seats and begin to converse. Slunk. 
I am left wondering about her, even when the classroom slowly fills with her students, and finally, the teacher who is always late. Yep. Getting into the rhythm of school feels strange. It's as if my brain remembers how this is done, but my body doesn't. Yep. I had a heart attack. Towards the end of the class, I start yawning and counting the minutes left. I shouldn't be this tired on my first day of school. Maybe it's the long time spent in the hospital that made me like this. I'm even feeling physically weak and lifeless. You can probably atrophy to shit. <laughs> Before long, the final bell rings. School is finally over for the day. Beside me, Misha and Sashune are having a short conversation. After a bit of deliberation, Misha turns to me. Unfortunately, we can't stay here and show you around today, Hichan. We've got to hurry already, since there's a lot of work for us to do. Wow. Aww. You'll find your way around here. I'm sure of it. Ah, wait. The teacher said I'd have to see the nurse. Where do I have to go? Is that so? We can at least show you that much. Come on. The nurses have their own building, so we have to go to outside. I have to go to outside. Yep. Which is not even what the fucking text said, but I read it that way. We join the flow of students making their way down the stairwell and outside, with the girls pointing out other senior classrooms in the same hallway as ours. When we get outside, the girls make their way to the smaller building right next to the school. It's built in the same style, so it looks like it's actually part of the main building. This is the auxiliary building here. There's a lot of official and important stuff inside, like the Gamaku Foundation office and all the nurses' office. They even have a swimming pool. Dope. How is that official? <laughs> Don't be silly, he chants for physical therapy, of course. Huh. Anyway, all the nursing staff facilities are in there, too. The head nurse's office is on the first floor. I wonder how the pink-haired bitch is disabled in any way. Good question. Yeah. Nymphomania. Perhaps. You'll be fine from here, right? Mm -hmm. We'll be going then. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. A whole building for stuff that has nothing to do with the actual education. I guess it's necessary for a place like this. I walk in, hoping this really will be only a quick visit, like the teacher said. It takes three weeks. Yep. On a white door on the left is a green cross with the text Head Nurse and a nameplate. A voice from the inside responds to my knock almost immediately, but I can't quite make it out. It sounded a bit like an invitation to open the door, so I invite myself further in. The room is not large, and it smells strange. A friendly-looking man turns around on his office chair to face me as I enter. His desk is neat and tidy, but the bed under the table is overflowing with used medical utensils, and there are at least a dozen coffee cup rings lingering on the desk. <laughs> Hello there! What can I do for you today? He is young-looking and sort of rugged, but the dimples in his cheeks wash that impression away when he smiles. Um, are uh, you the nurse? He smiles like a person who has heard this very same question hundreds of times. Look at that fucking smile. Oh, that's dope. He's a, he's a head nurse yep. at a school, but he's a man. That's awesome. Smiling man. Up with the patriarchy. Yes, up with the patriarchy, I say. Mm. Why, yes, I am. It says so on the door, no? <laughs> you can call me by my name or just the nurse, like everyone else. The nurse. Of course, I shake off my confusion, realizing I should probably grab his extended hand. Mm -hmm. His handshake is rather firm and friendly. Not sloppy, but not nice. I like this music, time. too. Give it this music a listen. Well, let's bump this for just a moment. Yeah, this game has pretty good music, but this is probably the best I've heard so far. This is fucking funky as shit. <laughs> I know, it's, it's, it's male nurse music. Yep. Oh, man. Right. <laughs> I feel like Hessman should take this music and sample it and rap to it. I could do that. I'm going to. <laughs> Let's do it. That's the newest single. The head male nurse music from yeah. Katawa Shusho. Fan video, gonna get a million views. Uh -huh. I'll make sure to tag the game in it. Definitely. I'm a new student, and my homeroom teacher told me to come and meet you. My name is Hisao Nakai. Hisao Nakai. Oh, gosh, text messages all day. His eyes light up with revelation, and he snaps his fingers. 
Oh, no, that in the guy. We have like fucking 50 of those. <laughs> I was just reading your file in the morning. Some kind of chronic arrhythmia related congenital heart muscle deficiency, right? <laughs> I know your kind. He gestures me to sit down in the vacant armchair in front of his desk. Oh, uh, yes, I gesture. Good. Well, you've probably been briefed about the school enough, so I'll just go over this quickly as I gesture. Yep. We have all kinds of gesture facilities available, yeah. mostly physical gesture therapy and such. Yes. There's always someone from my staff around, even at night, to gesture, so never hesitate <laughs> to call us if there is a gesture problem. The famous 24-hour nursing staff. Wow, this is like a hospital. Well, not exactly. For instance, we don't do brain surgery here. Ha ha ha! We like to have fun here. Yeah. His joke feels sort of waste for him left thinking why he even said it. Exactly. Yeah, just that it's really weird to have so many medical people in a school. You'll get used, used to it. it. <laughs> <laughs> just fuck you. <laughs> I'm not so sure of that myself, but I don't want the nurse to know it. Now, let me just find your file again. While he searches for something from his computer and shuffles stacks of papers around, I let my gaze wander around the room. So he's like searching the computer and shuffling yeah. papers at the same time. Like, Shh, <laughs> he, does, fuck. he doesn't know where the file actually is. He just. Uh, um, I had it here just today, I swear. Mm. It's the epitome of generic, I'd like to say. Beige walls and ceiling, dark gray laminate flooring, and all the equipment you'd expect from a school nurse's office. Swag. None of it. Yeah, no right. equipment. Tongue depressors. If anything, cotton balls. From my uh, from my experience in school nursing, at, at least as far as public school goes. Now, this might be a special school, but in my experience in public school, it was just a room with a woman at a desk or two women at two desks, with a little bit of medical utensils in their desks and a little cot for you to lie down in. Yep. Now, my experience in private school was much different. The nurse's office was also. Well, the school nurse was also the secretary, and so her office was the the main office. Oh, damn. Yeah, so if you had to see the nurse, you just had to go visit the secretary, and there was no equipment, and we didn't even have a cot. We just had a couch in a conference room that you just sat on. That was what you did when you were sick at private school. Shit on. Be budget to the max. Yeah. Even the ridiculous educational posters are hanging on all four walls, reminding me to eat properly three times <laughs> a day and from all the food groups. Yep. Especially the very top. Yep. Very, very top. Mm. Triangle is the best. I'd say so. It's the Illuminati triangle. Mm-hmm. Smiling, the nurse draws a thick file from a stack of similarly thick files and opens it. I love people with diseases because they make me feel superior. <laughs> yep. So you already have medication for the arrhythmia. Just remember to take your pills every morning and evening or it won't be much help. Apart from that, do you do any sports? Rash stuff like, I don't know, boxing? <laughs> he grins to his own joke, but I don't. His face changed yeah. so hilariously. <laughs> I know, he's had it a couple times now. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, well, I played soccer occasionally with some classmates. All right, well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to recommend you refrain from doing that. At least for the time being. Oh. My lack of reaction makes him raise an eyebrow. By brow. But really, I'm not too bothered by him for me to kick a ball around. I guess I never did it out of burning passion for the sport. Just to have something to do. And any kind of concussion might be very dangerous to your heart. And risking uh, another heart attack is not a good idea. Was the previous one caused by a sudden concussion in the chest area? There is no mention of the cause in your papers. Er, uh, not exactly. <laughs> I size at the question acceptably, and he glances at me over his papers with a more serious expression on his face. Yep. Still, you need to keep your body healthy, so some exercise would do you good. 500 setups. <laughs> we have physical therapy and such available, as I said, but I don't think you really need such heavy measures. Just get some light exercise regularly. Brisk walks, or even light jogging, jumping rope, that sort of thing. Swimming, maybe? There's a pool here. So I was told. You were? Very good. At any rate, I'm sure you've been told this before, but you just need to take care of not to overexert yourself. He wags his finger to emphasize the point. No need, really. I've heard this a thousand times already. 
absolutely no unnecessary risks. Take care of yourself. Okay. Look at he's like fucking squinting hardcore yeah. out of one eye. He goes over my papers one more time and sets them on the desk. Obviously content. Good. That's it then. Come meet me if you ever need some. I'm ushered out before I even realize it. A quick visit indeed. Now I have the rest of the day to fucking bottle around doing jack shit at school, not knowing where to go, where my glasses are at, exactly. or where I'm supposed <laughs> to be in any sense. And they're standing in front of the main building and the auxiliary building. Although, to my eyes, they look one and the same. And it's the first real look I get at the other students. So I watch people coming out of the school, going towards the gate of the dorms. Well, school's over. Ooh, school's over at this point. Mm. So they uh, are just going to go head just home. heading around. Yeah. Everyone seems to know where they're going. Well, of course. After the first week, everyone fucking knows where they're going. Yeah. Unless you're mean, you still carry your schedule around in your back pocket for the first month. Really? Because they can't warn directions with a fuck. I see. Even in a school? Well, I mean, I warned most of my classes, but, like, as, like, the weird ones, like the ones that were downstairs in the side hallways and shit. Okay, yeah, as well. Those took me a while to get. It took, really, the, the thing was, it took me a longer time to memorize what days meant I was supposed to go where as opposed to where things were at. Mm-hmm. Like, the only time I was ever late in high school, except for the days where I fucking intentionally skipped. Yeah. Um, I went to my Tuesday class on Wednesday, and by the time I sat down hmm. at my desk, and by the time, like, I realized, like, oh, shit, I'm in the fucking wrong room. Oh, okay, I've done it that It was before, too yeah. late to get to where I was actually going. Yep. That's the way of it, though. Punish, they punish you if you don't follow the system. Yeah, my, Even uh, if the system is absurd. My health teacher, who thought so incredibly little of me, because every time there was a drug conversation in class, I was just like, well, that's fucking bullshit. Yeah. Well, that's bull... Come on, are you kidding me? Anyway, she hated my guts and thought I was, like, the worst fucking person in the world. Yeah. She saw my attendance record being fucking flawless and was like, what the fuck? This is your first absence? Yeah. I can't believe this. I see that. Fuck her. Mrs. Hill, you can go die. Oh, you had Mrs. Hill? Yeah. Was she an old... No, she was a young bitch. Okay. She was, like, straight out of college. Well, they might have had a different Mrs. Hill. Hill's pretty a common name, though. It is indeed. I had a Mrs. Hill as a teacher in uh, the public school district, and she was an she old, She was the person that said it would be woman. more healthy to eat nothing and starve to death than to have a candy bar. Wow. So, hardcore to the core. Well, that's certainly not healthy. Starving to death is the no, opposite she, of healthy. No, she said the only, like, the, really what she said was the only acceptable time to eat a candy bar was if you were if, just seconds before starving. starving like, because uh, another one of my classmates mm -hmm. who I will refrain from saying the name of, even though I said half of the last name. Did you? St uh, anyway, it was kind of, mm -hmm. I'm not going to repeat it, um, but... <laughs> One of my classmates was like, well, what if you're in the middle of a desert and, like, there's yeah, no okay. water? Like, is it okay to eat, like, a Snickers? And there's eat? always one asshole. And her reaction was, uh, yeah, I guess. I guess it's better than nothing. If my health teacher told me that, I would, even just, even myself being overweight, I would still bring candy into the school every day and eat it just in front of her. Oh, I did. Because fuck that. Oh, absolutely did. I helped with the drugs, not hugs poster. Uh-huh. <laughs> Got me counseling. Does that make me one of them? One of us? Gabba gabba, we accept you. We accept you. <laughs> one of us? I one should go somewhere, us. too. One of us. <laughs> <laughs> to prevent me from getting lost. Yes, go get lost to prevent yourself from getting lost. Yeah. Brilliant. Smashing. It's around dinner time, but I feel tired instead of hungry. The weariness in me only grows as I trudge towards the dorms to set a little way apart from the main building complex. There is a garden of sorts between the school and the dorms. Shrubbery, flowers, and that overbearing smell of fresh cut grass that fills the atmosphere. I hate it. It dawns on my tired mind that the smell of the smell feels novel because I haven't been outside at all for so long. It, it makes uh, hospital wing. It makes my allergies go insane, grass does. I uh, tell you. Uh, yeah, what's What's this? Hey, Jesse, go mow the lawn. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, I'd rather not. Yeah. I love mowing the lawn, guys. I really do, but it kills me. Yep. I'm a man without his man ability. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a riding one, it wouldn't be as bad. It's though. not as bad, I gotta say. Yeah. Weeding is the worst. Mm -hmm. Ooh. I have to say so. Ooh. Weeding's Ooh. the worst. Ooh. Traumatic memories. Can you don't think it's going to be as bad as mowing, but it, it's much worse. It in your space yeah. at all times. I don't care if there's a guard on it. Mm-hmm. 
The dorm building is big and made of red brick. Like the others, it feels way too pompous for what it is, so I push forward going inside. <laughs> I take more time necessary to finish out the key I was going for in my pocket. Room 119. Despite the ornate exterior, the inside of the room is fairly new functional and boring. Just like in the main building, the halls and doors are wide to accommodate wheelchairs. The same goes for the elevators that you know the hall is. So I head around the corner of the common room door. Inside, a few students are watching the television. One nods and gives a quick hello before turning back to the TV. Seems to be the only girls around here are sociable. I suppose it's worth fine with me. I climb the stairs the upper floor. Here, small corridors reach out from the main hallway. Each one of these mirror halls seems to have a sort and shower as well as four rooms. About halfway down the hall, I spot room 119. The nameplate in the door is just in a minor blank. I guess we're just two of us here. Ooh, just two of us in the area. And the whole floor? I bet it's a girly. Oh, I hope so. 117. Well, if this school was smart at all, they would put girls and boys in different buildings. Four like, man. Yeah, exactly. That's a weird dorm, because, you know, they're, they're fucking special, so they don't That's true. Them. Hello? Is anyone home? From inside, I hear a few movements. Then the clicking of way more locks than I thought these doors had. After a moment, the door squeaks open. Ah, uh, no, you're right. It is... A bespectacled boy standing in the doorway. He is looking at me very intently through his extremely thick eyeglasses. He's blind. Yep. Who is it? Blind? No. At least not completely. Why would he have eyeglasses if he was? For show. He leans closer to me until our noses are almost touching. His breath stinks of garlic. <laughs> you sound like I. I'm moving into the next room. I thought I should introduce my... His face suddenly brightens in realization. And he stands back upright, thrusting his hand out in the smiling greeting. Okay, at least he's not an asshole. Oh, what's up, dude? The name's Genji. Yeah. Ah, uh, Hi. I take Genji's sweaty hand and shake it. Still a little rattled by the sudden change of attitude and vehement welcome. There are some suspicious people looking around going in and out of your room earlier. It was probably my parents. <laughs> yep. <laughs> your parents? You sure? Because they could have been some other people, too. You can't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> <laughs> it's out of place proverb is left hanging between his awkwardness. I try to think of some way to respond. Yep, you can't judge your parents by their cover. I'd say the chances are high enough. He shudders and makes some exaggerated hand gestures. You're a brave man, he's out. <laughs> Me? I don't think I can trust the chances. I like this guy. The only one I trust is myself. Fuck you. <laughs> Does that mean I shouldn't get to know you either? He thinks about this for a while. A wise decision. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you are smarter than you look. Probably. <laughs> what do you look like? I hope not smart. He squints his eyes and leans closer again, but I lean backwards to dodge it. Never mind. It doesn't matter. So he he's almost blind. He's legally blind, but he's not completely blind. Yeah. With that, he turns, fumbles around for a moment in search of the door handle, and shuts the door behind him. In my face. <laughs> I saw the key to the lock of the door marked 119. Bleak beige walls. White linen and a desk made of some type of white wood. Ugly curtains. Ugly curtains. It's no one's room, impersonal, like my hospital room was. My bags are sitting at the foot of my bed, looking a lot emptier than they did this morning. The closet is sitting open, stacked with my clothes. Also, it seems there are a number of school uniforms hanging there as well. Yep. I notice pinned to the sleeve of one of the shirts. Hi, Chad. We've unpacked your things and made your bed. They said that if these don't fit, then you should go to the office tomorrow. If you have any problems, you can always call us. Love, Mom and Dad. Well, at least I don't have to worry about unpacking. Kind of hoped I would have, then there would be something to do. Still too early. Put the note down on the desktop and lie down on the bed, feeling drained. I don't have a computer, so I can't even look up porn. Yeah, really. Why? It makes me want to read something pornographic. But I have nothing with me. Not even a laptop. Yep. Not I even wonder. a 1970s Playboy. Yeah. I wonder if the hospital conditioned me for wanting to read whenever I have nothing to do. The restless urge just keeps growing until I have to stand up. Sounds like he's addicted to reading. Well, he fucking lived in a hospital. Well, I think that's kind of understandable. Uh, maybe. Maybe it's stress or something. Who knows? I was pretty nervous about it before coming, and for the entire day today, too. I still am, I think. Damn. I have to distract myself somehow. So I won't be this unnatural all the time. Tomorrow, I'll go borrow some books from the library. Yeah, I'll do that. But for now... Suicide! <laughs> yeah, for now I will just kill myself. 
The bottles and medications neatly arranged on my right side table will catch my eye. I pick up one and shake it just to hear the contents right on side, and then read the glued-on pharmacy label. Warning, do not take upon danger of death. Shit, really. You sound the kind. Two tablets daily to stay alive. Wow. 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 I cannot believe that's the note they left. Uh, that's Japan for you. Take these or die. Well, this is real life. It doesn't really nice. say that, but it could just as well. Okay, good. Thank goodness. Kind of twisted. I mean, you like to depend on chemicals like this. I resent the little, but what choice do I have? Death. Death. With a sigh, I begin my new daily ritual of taking the right number of pills from each bottle, being careful to check the correct dosages, which is really just counting pills. Yep. I lie down again, feeling hollow and uncertain, and after that I keep staring at the blank, unfamiliar ceiling for a long time. The world is turning gray. It doesn't start looking any more familiar, not even after darkness falls and long shadows draw across my room like fingers. I've laid in the bed motionless for hours now, <laughs> contemplating my current situation. The sheets feel slightly more comfortable, warm and nest-like against the chill that passes for room temperature here. Soon, the wider shade of darkness that is the ceiling looks like every ceiling does at night, and it becomes the only thing I recognize anymore. Yep. I drift off to sleep. The night beckons me, and I feel the coldness of unfamiliarity and fear creeping up my spine once again. Dear Lord. I keep drifting further away from the world I knew, and I die. <laughs> yeah, really, that sounds like death. Chapter 3! Kawata Shoujo. It's like a TV show. I like it. I do too.